Hello and welcome to RSAC TV. I'm Jason Heiner, the host uh, this morning uh, from ZDNet and Tech Republic. Uh, here we're going to talk about this week lots of security experts, lots of great advice, lots of wisdom, and talk to some really smart people to help us learn a lot more about how to make cybersecurity better. Uh, our host, uh, our, our guest this morning is Yaniv Avidan, um, the CEO of Hi. Miner Eye. Uh, Yaniv, welcome. I think. Very good, so uh, thanks for, for being here. Uh, you are the, the CEO of a company that's doing some really interesting things to make uh, security better, make cybersecurity better, and to solve um, one of the most persistent problems. Uh, and so let's, let's talk a little bit though about the, the state of security and how that, that got to kind of what you guys do. Um, you know, we, we've been working for the past uh, decade and more in, in security industry uh, on moving from this model of network security where you just secure a perimeter um, and then every once you get inside, you let the sort of people inside, then you know you have access. Uh, that hasn't worked real well as we've moved to sort of mobile devices and IoT and um, lots of other cloud uh, and, and, and more, uh, a newer architecture. It's been more of this uh, data-centric security right. where you identify your most important assets. But now it's sort of moving to another, the next stage, which is more like AI-powered security or machine learning. Talk to us a little bit, about, you've worked in the security industry for, uh, for a long time. Um, tell us a little bit about you know, that, that evolution. Yeah, so first thank you for having me, Jason, and uh, I'm really thrilled to be here. Um, I think we've seen that gradually evolving, um, very parallel to how data evolves within companies or within the enterprise. And we see, as, as you said, more and more uh, platforms entering into the, uh, um, into the enterprise kind of scene. We see also data evolving and many data, uh, many data formats evolving and, and new data coming in. We saw data piling up, you know, in an sure. exponential, uh, uh, phase, and I, mean, I just read a, a, a you know some stats about it that the past two years uh, has been, I mean, um, you know, almost 90% of the data that have been be, have been created ever. Yes. So this is um, those three aspects of, of how the compute world and and how people use data and how data becomes centric within our life in making decisions, you know, extracting value, moving faster with business, yeah. actually shaping the security. Uh, arena and shaping the security, uh, uh, the way we consume security. Um, one of the things that uh, now really driving uh, back, uh, you know, former old kind of discussions is GDPR actually, or uh, all the privacy stuff that we see in TV uh, with all the Facebook uh, stuff yeah. that we see. And this keeps pounding back, you know, bouncing back, you know, all the privacy. Um, on one hand, we share data very quickly. We, are, we wanna move quickly, we wanna use as many uh, channels to exchange data, exchange information. On the other hand, we're uh, getting more and more sensitive about our own private uh, information. Those are uh, not necessarily uh, contradiction vectors. Once you use some sophistication around uh, artificial intelligence and identification of sensitive data discovery, uh, you can actually work those two together. So you notice when you, you were wor you've worked in the security industry, uh, worked in, on security in in the tech industry for a long time, and one of the things that you noticed uh, in working there was that uh, there was a problem in the way that we approach it, and that it, it was important to be able to change the paradigm in order to right. <laughs> uh, in order to better protect. Um, the company's most important assets, to take more of a risk management approach to security than just constantly reacting and chasing bad guys, right? right Tell right. us about that. Yeah, it was uh, back then in my Intel days. Um, I, I was hired to, uh, uh, as a guy that had the experience around data mining and machine learning to uh, uh, actually see if there's a, a way to harness data to identify those those uh, actors, those attackers yeah. um, that either are already in or are trying to get in, and so on and so forth. And most of back then, most of the security was network oriented and, and not and less in data. Um, um, I, I was lucky enough to uh, hook up with the uh, best minds, uh, not just within Intel, but also with Lockheed Martin and stuff like this, and learn this 
very thoroughly, uh, and we formed a team of data scientists back then um, and, and subject matter experts to uh, actually crunch a lot of uh, information and, and find those bad guys. Now, we were very successful, I mean, uh, compared to other solutions back then. And, uh, sure. So uh, it was a new hype, but then it sparked my mind that the tactics should change. Um, and and I, I just uh, talked ba back then to my manager, Malcolm, and I, I asked him, why are we keep on chasing those bad guys when we know there are always three, two to three steps ahead of us? Or even, you know, more than a few months already in. Sure. Doing what they want. Um, instead of uh, putting all our efforts in identifying those crown jewels, you know, isolating them, uh, and then uh, focusing the security controls to secure them. Uh, I think we'll be much more efficient in doing that. We'll be uh, much more forward-looking as data evolves and networks evolve and create some better solutions going forward. So that's how we started. So Very good, so let's talk more about that uh, in a minute, how that led to you starting MinerEye, but let's talk for a minute about, um, you mentioned GDPR. Yep. Um, GDPR is, is, is imminent, um, next month uh, is when it arrives. There's still some confusion around it, but you have a lot of people that come um, to you um, wanting help with this, and they see you know, what you guys do as a, as a way to help them. What, what, when you look at GDPR and you think about it compared to other sort of governance systems, and what, what, what do you think the impact is going to be, and what, what's the impact you see you know, on, on customers that are coming to you wanting help with it? Yeah, I, I think, as, as you said, there's a lot of, there was more confusion there and uncertainty on what's uh, going to be, uh, I don't know, the deadline will be, uh, my bet is that um, at least the European will find some, uh, you know, test cases just to uh, uh, show that uh, there are some teeth behind this. But I think that um, everybody, uh, uh, and for and foremost our customers, should look at this as an opportunity rather than a, as a deadline. And focus less on the legal definitions of, of GDPR. I know it's not well defined sometimes. There's a lot of holes or confusion or some uh, vagueness around this. But take that as an opportunity to improve uh, information governance as a whole. Okay. Because this is a, a, a building block, as I said before, in doing almost everything, not just about reducing risk around data, improving our security, information security, or privacy. It's also about extracting value for our businesses. Sure. Uh, and that's uh, enabling those businesses to run faster, make more money, uh, and, and you know, that's where I'm talking about. There's no contradiction between data privacy and protection and moving faster with the business making more money. Uh, and that's how I think uh, businesses should look on that. And, mo and the most important thing is not doing the same mistakes again that we've done 20 years ago. Yeah. Just look forward. Yeah, so when you think of, uh, do you see companies coming to you, is it mostly um, companies focused on their European operations or European companies, or do you see multinational companies um, take looking at GDPR and saying, okay, we're going to take this as the opportunity to uh, just improve governance um, across the board, not just in our European operations? Yeah. Well, what we see here is um, multinational companies, especially big companies, that have the, uh, uh, the resources and the teams to check on new uh, technologies. That they have the breadth to do that. And, and um, um, yeah, GDPR is a driver, but we see you know, effects in, in the US, privacy shield. We see even state level uh, new regulation coming in, also in California and, and New York. We see that uh, th this happening, but most of those customers are multinational that are, again, uh, taking the opportunity and the budgets um, you know, of providing them by the board, thanks to GDPR, to improve their privacy posture, but also do some stuff around uh, new technologies and and, uh, uh, and solve big problems around this. Very good, all right, so let's talk a little bit about um, MinerEye and the solution that, that you created um, to deal with this more proactive approach to security and to what you call the crown jewels, right. you know, your most valuable data, most valuable assets, um, digital assets in the company. Um, you know, what, what did you do? Why, you know, talk to us about why you created the company and then, um, you know, what solution that you guys offer. Yeah, so as I told you, uh, it started from the point where I wanted to, you know, to replace the uh, 
chasing the bad guys and yeah. identifying the, the crown jewels. Um, but the main thing I, I asked myself is how can we make th things much easier to our, uh, to our partners to consume this technology rather than you know, doing the same old stuff like identifying or defining rules, keywords, dictionaries, you know, maintaining that, do a lot of manual work here. And that's where machine learning comes into place. But we added another thing that actually um, acts as a, a very unique approach. And this is how the machine identifies the data. Okay. Which is the very basics uh, behind our technology. Uh, that's where my partner, Avner, worked for me in one of uh, the former uh, work I've done with the Israel Minister of Defense. And okay. he was uh, actually a, uh, a uh, he developed algorithms around tracking targets on a video stream. Okay. So I asked him, if you can track targets, why can't you track sensitive data on a network? That's how the idea, it was completely off, right, back then. But after uh, 18 months, uh, we actually uh, been able to convert technology from a totally different use case, military yeah. use case, into um, that specific domain of identifying the data uh, and automatically and actually tracking the data wherever it resides and whatever form it actually has. And that's the beautiful thing about it. Today, this platform actually can be uh, trained by a normal guy that has no data science background okay. by just providing some examples of what he considers sensitive data and some state definition of that data. And that actually acts as a training set for the system. And from that point, the system is totally autonomous in okay. identifying the data and reporting or even triggering security controls to act upon those uh, identification. The best analogy I can provide for this is uh, think about your own kid. The first time you, uh, you train him how to cross the street, for instance. So you identify the cross, the, you know, the, the, the walking, the, the crossroad, and you identify some states in which the road needs to be in order to cross. And your kid is smart enough to know that, you know, after one example, two examples, and that's what actually we created. This system uh, needs very few examples of specific data domains to uh, actually create its own taxonomy and, and classification and tracking of this uh, data. So your solution is focused on identifying, you know, um, tracking that data and then interfacing with other systems that are, exactly. that are yeah. triggering the protection controls, encryption, you know, um, and, and those kinds of things. So it so it's a solution for both data in rest, data in motion, yep. um, and even during, you know, migrations and, and those right. kinds of things. Right, right. Uh, um, we, we see multiple use cases um, that follow the uh, common sense rule. First, okay. uh, they use this solution to minimize the data. And that's, by the way, a, a explicit requirement by GDPR. You need to get rid of the noise. Mm -hmm. You need to uh, identify those redundant uh, pieces of information that have been uh, accessed, have been touched for a long time and are uh, duplicates across your environment. And that's very easy for the system to identify and track. Um, minor eye, minor eye will help the you minor identify eye. Exa this. Exactly, okay. so they start off with this. By the way, they gain Im immense value right after a few hours by clearing a huge amount of space in their disk. Think about it, millions of dollars of saving. Really? So it pays off really after a few hours. Okay. The next stage would be to actually uh, identify the data and classify the data, either using our own uh, classification capability internally or using uh, external labeling mechanisms such as Azure or any other capability that we interface. And uh, having said that, the system uh, is connected also to uh, other security controls to act upon those uh, lists of data that it identifies. The third um, use case is to be able to segregate the data. So I want to make sure that data doesn't leave a specific geography, hence GDPR or any other uh, privacy solution, or I just want internally the data will be segregated and not be uh, able to be accessed by people that shouldn't access the data. Uh, again, all goes back to the um, ability to identify uh, data in its dynamic state, yeah. right, at all times continuously classify it and act upon it. So a customer buys your product, how long does it take, how onerous is it to, to get it up and running? 
um, you know, whether it's a big company, little company, you know, is there is there a difference even depending on the size of the company, amount of data, all of that? Yeah. So, so you know, straightforward installation is about 15 minutes. 15 minutes? Yeah, it's about 15 minutes. Configuring it, it does not require more than read permission over your repositories. There's no uh, local installations of agents. It's all done from remote. Uh, this is key element. The learning phase depends on the number of files that, that you go through Kay. and the resources you allocate. We designed this, uh, it's not just to be very easy to install for the IT uh, guys, but also to configure it uh, and distribute the solution according to the network architecture. Okay, That's very easy approach. Plus, it's all uh, contained in a virtual appliance that's, you know, all the technology is contained inside, the capsule is inside, so they don't need to manage databases or versions of operating systems and, and so on. Plus, this is all in your uh, virtualization environment. Again, you don't need to come up with appliances. All you need is to allocate the compute resources and, and, and kick it off. So, uh, very easy to install, very easy to maintain, and very easy to extract value immediately right after the first run of the system. Uh, those are, uh, the, it's, we put a lot of effort in, in designing the solution this way. Very good, so machine powered, data centric security that will help you with GDPR and that will uh, help you be much more proactive in the way that you yeah. protect your, your network. Yeah. Very good, Yaniv, thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.